Morning guys, Corey here from Sky's the Limit Car Care. And today we have an informational video for you on why and how to clean your polishing pads. So you've got a variety of polishing pads, obviously you've got foam, you've got microfiber, you've got foam that's shaped like waffle pads, you've got wool, you've got twisted wool, and so all of those things are going to uh, equate into how it's best to clean them. Um, I'll kind of go over a brief summary and then we might get into a little bit more detail. So with foam pads, it's very simple. This is the best way to go if you don't have an air compressor. Uh, this, or even we sell these as a polishing pad cleaning brush for a few bucks. You could also use an old toothbrush. Uh, it'll work in a pinch, although these bristles are thicker, um, so they do work a little better. Um, and then, so that's for foam pads. This one, this one, this one, this one. We'll do a little demo of that in a minute. Um, with wool pads, especially specifically twisted wool pads, uh, for that you want to use like a spur like this. It's got three, uh, three spurs on there. And so you just hold that, you run the machine just gently, and um, you do something similar to what we're going to do with this, but it's for, that one's for twisted wool to really get the gunk out of there. Uh, in a pinch, guys will use a screwdriver even to clean a twisted wool pad. I know that's uh, been something that you know, guys have been using for ages. Um, and with microfiber, um, you can use a, a pad cleaning brush like this on the microfiber pads as well. But what's going to work better on all of these microfiber and foam pads than anything that we have here is an air compressor. So if you have an air compressor, uh, then blowing the pad out is by far the best thing that you can do. Now when we're talking about cleaning pads and what I'm specifically discussing right now, we're talking about cleaning them on the fly while you're polishing your car. Um, once you're done, then, we have, then we're going to clean them a little more thoroughly with liquid and chemicals and all that. So I'm going to kind of back up now and take you through a step-by-step -step process, tell you how many pads you're generally going to use on a car uh, per step and how you're going to clean as you go. So like I said, optimally you would use an air compressor to clean the pads, but let's say you just get started, you've got your car all prepared, you're, uh, you're washed, you're decontaminated, you're in the polishing stage. So you've got your machine, you've got your pad, and you're just starting your car. So you may be doing just one step and using this pad with a certain polish, or you might be doing two steps where you're going to go all the way around the car with this pad or this pad or this pad, whatever pad it is. And then when you're done with that step, then you're going to come back and do a second step with a different polish and a different pad, a finishing step. So compounding and finishing. Regardless of which you're doing, if it's a one step or a two step, whatever it is, you're generally going to use what I would recommend anyway, what we always recommend is at least four pads per step. So um, if you're doing a two step, then you're going to want four of these pads and then four of your finishing pads. If you're going to do a one step, then you just need four of the, uh, the sky blue pad. Generally, you're going to break that up uh, around the car. So say you'll do uh, a door with, with this pad. Um, and then maybe a, a fender, and then you might pull this pad off of the, off the machine and put another one of the same pad on. Um, while you're doing that initial door, while you're doing that area, you're going to actually be cleaning this pad after every section. That's an important thing to do. You're going to break your sections off into about two square feet or you know, whatever the area is, depending on the contours of the vehicle. But when you, uh, you don't want to take on more than about two square feet at a time because you're going to be cutting off clear coat and building up uh, dust and everything inside of your pad. And once that gets overloaded, your pad stops cutting as well. And that's the reason that you want to clean it. So let's say we've polished our first section on the car. Uh, we've gone over it. It's, it's polished. Now we have a bunch of clear coat and um, compound dust all built up in the cells. And once that's all stuck inside those cells, once those cells are all clogged up, the pad can't cut as well as it used to and that's why you have to clean it regularly. If you just take one pad and just keep going and buzzing away and you never clean it, then it's going to stop cutting and you're just going to be fighting yourself basically from that point on. So, so it's really important to clean it. Not only will it stop cutting as well and eventually pretty much all together, but it'll also not be finishing down as well, especially on the finishing step which it, where it's critical. So to do that, obviously if you have an air compressor, that's the best way. You just take the machine, you, you put it on a, on a low setting, like you know one or two, something like that. And then you have the air compressor, you just spin it like that, and then just blow it with the air compressor. Start there and just 
blow it out and blow it back in while you're running the machine. And it'll just blow everything out of there. Um, generally what I'll do, it depends on the kind of shop you have and you know how, how, what kind of uh, cleaning systems you have and how, how clean you keep your shop. But what I usually do if I'm just working in my, in my garage is I'll just have a bucket that has a little bit of water in the bottom of it and I'll just drop it down into the bucket and do it inside the bucket so that kind of uh, the moisture will catch most of the dust. Some of it still gets out, but that's what I do. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways to try to uh, contain that, that dust, but if you can keep that away from you know, everything, then that's best. So with a polishing pad uh, cleaning brush, it's basically the same thing. You light that up and then you just, if you press down real hard, then you're gonna cut up your pad a lot faster. And depending on the type of pad, some may cut up faster than others. So you don't wanna press hard, that's not necessary. It's just a nice light cut like this. And that's all there is to it. Now that pad's nice and clean. Now you can take some more compound put a few more dots on there, and it's already primed from that first section that you did. Put like three pea-sized dots on there, and uh, you just go to it with the next section. So do another uh, you know, two square feet approximately, and wash, rinse, repeat basically. Well, not, not literally wash, rinse, repeat, but pad clean, repeat. And after you've gotten around, say, a quarter of the car, then you're gonna pull that pad off, put another pad on, and repeat. The reason we're pulling those pads off and switching them out is because there's a few things. Number one, I like that it's not that it's not going to overheat the pad. It gives that pad a break. We're not just taking that pad off and throwing it away. We're switching out. That way we can get more life out of the pads instead of just beating the hell out of one pad all the way around the car, which you technically can do, but it's just not optimal. So you pull the one pad off. Uh, you have a little bucket somewhere. You might have a pad cleaner. There's a lot of solutions out there. But if you don't have a pad cleaner, then you have a little bucket with some uh, CarPro MFX in it um, or some all-purpose cleaner, something like that. And then you just take that, clean it with the pad brush like we just did for the final time, pull it off and put it face down on that bucket and let that cleaning solution just kind of soak in there. And then at that point you put a new pad on, et cetera. You just go ahead and move around the car. And so every quarter car you pull it off, do the same thing. And then when you're all done for the day, then you can go ahead and take that same pad cleaning brush and you've got some solution on there um, and you have all your pads that you use throughout the day and you can clean them out a little more thoroughly, kind of squeeze the pad, let some solution soak into it, clean it out, and then when you're all done, you know, rinse it out really well, and then just squeeze the pad and put it somewhere to dry where it's not gonna get any dust, dirt, sand, anything like that, so put it up high somewhere on a drying rack. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, if you have a air compressor, you're able to get those cells even more clean and get all that stuff blowed all out really well, so that's, that's the, the best way to do it. With microfiber, pads, um, that polishing pad cleaning brush still works, but the difference between a uh, air compressor and a pad cleaning brush on a foam pad is like this. On a microfiber pad, it's like this. It's a huge difference. This is not going to work as well on a microfiber pad as a polishing or as a uh, air compressor will. So you're much better off with an air compressor with a microfiber pad uh, over time. Um, with the wool pads, yes, some people still use those, um, and especially on a rotary machine, and there's definitely a place for them. And in that case, um, there's, you could use an air compressor as well, but generally you're gonna, no matter what, you wanna use your first step with something like the, uh, the spur or the screwdriver if you, uh, if you don't have a spur and you're in a pinch. I think that covers everything that we wanted to talk about today. Uh, there's one other thing I did wanna mention. We have these really cool Oberk pad uh, hangers. These things are really neat if you haven't seen them. Basically, you can just uh, you can mount them wherever you want. You've got a little hole right there, and so you can actually take these pads and just have them just have them uh, stuck wherever you want on your wall or however you want to mount these, whatever you want to mount these to. You just have it right there on the wall when you're done, and then you can just kind of twist and it'll peel right off. That stays on the wall, and it's just a really cool way of uh, storing your pads if you want to be able to pull them off there easily. There's obviously uh, your imagination goes wild with all the, all the different ways you can use these. So, so that's a neat solution. Uh, other than that, I think that, that uh, covers everything we had for our video today. Uh, I wanted to encourage you guys to go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And uh, any comments or questions, make sure to leave those below. We'll answer those right away. We really appreciate you guys joining us. Uh, let us know if you have any videos that you would like to see in particular that we haven't put together already. And we will see you next time. Have a great day, guys. 
Take care.